Good evening. The king is back. <laughs> the, the um, who? No, I, well, yeah, yeah, I'm back. John O's back with Eugene to discuss. I drew the straw. Yeah. I drew, I, I drew the, the the short straw. Simon said he didn't want to come on for this game because he had to endure the pain of the English loss. So he's asked me to endure the pain of the South African loss. Yes, yes. So disappointed. Well, yeah. I mean, which we will no doubt come on to uh, and talk about Do in great depth. For, for 15 whole minutes, we can discuss that. I've obviously been away for a few days, but I am now firmly back. Having been having listened to some of the episodes recorded by you two, Simon, has Simon been drinking heavily? There were a couple of them. I was like, <laughs> he sounds battered. <laughs> I, think, I think we were um, battered on a few of them. I mean, it was a busy weekend, right? So mm. there was a few times when we recorded at some strange time of the night when, I mean, we recorded one episode after South Africa beat France, after I'd had, it felt like 27 pints in a tequila, I think it was even mentioned. But Yes, yeah. I remember I remember you talking about the tequila, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. well, yeah, I, I was watching the rugby in Spain, had a, had a wonderful day, wonderful, uh, wonderful few days away uh, with three good friends, uh, to all of us, actually. And yeah, I got back early evening tonight. So um, yeah, straight back into it. So on that, let's go. I'm, 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 I'm going to let Dutch? you lead here. Yeah, how good are the Dutch? I mean, look, <laughs> when, when you're when you're outplayed by a better team, so so I'm not going to blame the pitch because Simon brought up a and he's mentioned it a few times that the pitch is now changing in the second half, and there's almost a more of a reason to bat first. Because for some reason, the wickets are turning to the India of old, where they're doing a little bit more. I mean, the two bowls today when Markram and Janssen got out, it looked like the ball rolled. I don't think so. I think it was the skill of the bowler. But we'll talk about the bowling in a second uh, of the, of the first of all, of, of the Dutch. But first of all, the bowling of the South Africans. Actually, let's start with the fielding. How shit was our fielding? You know, I know that the outfield is not the greatest, but some of the fielding was not great. The bowling was even worse than the fielding. It was just one of those days where it looked like South Africa rocked up, thought they were going to go through the motions and beat the Dutch. And credit to the Dutch, you know, really stuck in it for the whole game, not being in a great position, you know, being what, uh, 50 for four, you know, 82 for five, 112 for six, then putting on, you know, the, the tail putting on all the runs and getting to two, four, five. I mean, it just shows on on these Indian wickets that if you give yourself a little bit of time, you have the opportunity to to cash in big. And my God, did Scott Edwards, Logan Van Beek, Rula Van Amerba, and um, Iron Dutt, did they cash in big towards the end? Mm. Yeah, real good. As I say, I, I, I kind of saw bits of it having just got back into the country, but 21 wides seems a lot, oh. especially when I think the next highest in the tournament is 11 in any innings. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I went through all the different days and I looked at all the different games and I was thinking to myself, surely somebody's going to have more than 21 wides, 32 extras. Nope, South Africa have now, you know, when they want to be the best at something, my God, they're the best at it. Um, and we're not talking about the Rugby World Cup. We're talking about the amount of extras that a South Africa bowled today. Yeah, 21 wides and just length balls. I mean, for some reason, we thought we could bump the 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 Dutch out. We were yeah. just bowling short, and it just kept call, getting called wide, and we just carried on bowling wide. Considering, you know, the venue it has the highest percentage of swing, for some reason, we negated all of that swing by just bowling shit, half volleys or bounces. You know, it was it was just like there was, like I said, it, it just looked like the South Africans rocked up and thought it was just going to be a procession and they were going to be a thrashing according to Superbrew. Yeah. Didn't work out like that. The, I mean, obviously, from a Super Rugby perspective, I don't think anybody will have picked that result uh, unless people are back in the short. But in the bits that I did see in the kind of last 10 overs or so of the, the uh, Dutch innings, Rabada bowled two kind of long ops, slower ball, off pace long ops that both got crushed to the extra cover boundary and then just lost his mind at the bowler. Now, mm. there is a bit of petulance about Rabada. We've covered this off previously you know sometimes just gets his head in the wrong space mentally 
but I think didn't didn't they concede a hundred in the last ten or so overs? I most definitely did. Yeah, I mean, what a phenomenal stat to to for the Dutch. Let's let's just be let's give them credit instead of telling you know telling them how bad South Africa was. The, the Dutch were just phenomenal. They they cashed in and they scored a hundred off the last ten or nine overs. I can't remember exactly what it was. So, you know, credit where credit's due and. I don't think they can be called minnows anywhere. It was interesting. I saw something. I saw a, a stat saying the percentages of the teams that are currently playing in the Cricket World Cup to qualify for the semi-finals, and they had the Dutch at zero percent before today's game. I'd love really? to see what that stat looks like now, considering they've just rolled over. You know, one of the teams that looked to be favourites, giving you know two yeah. very good wins over Sri Lanka and, and Australia. But you know, I think the England Afghanistan game goes to show that. You know these tier two nations; they might not be as consistent as the as the as you know the Indias and the and and I'm going to go New Zealand's because those are the two front runners at the moment. But they do have a couple of games in them where they can rock up and you know mm-hmm. and absolutely trance people. So well done to to both Afghanistan and now the Dutch. Hundred percent. I mean, we were just saying off air, weren't we? That I think well, certainly I think that this World Cup is going to turn into a World Cup where. Every, not everybody beats everybody, obviously, but I think everybody will lose games. I, I don't think that um, anybody is yet out of it. As much as it was kind of fun to think that Australia might have been after their first two uh, losses, they beat Sri Lanka reasonably comfortably despite losing a, two or three wickets reasonably early yesterday. But now, I mean, the 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 Saturday was always going to be huge for England, mm. but now there's a bit more on it for South Africa as well, isn't there? Yeah. Look, I think whenever England and South Africa play against each other in any sport, there's always something in it. So now that South Africa have lost a game and, you know, I, I didn't want to say had one in the bag because they hadn't lost a game going into Saturday. Now I think there's, as you say, a bit more in it. But yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a phenomenal day of sport, really looking forward to it. And hopefully both teams, you know, we, we had this conversation, Robo and I, last night saying there hasn't been a nail biter yet. In yeah. the Cricket World Cup, that is. Rugby World Cup, well, there's been a few. Cricket World Cup, we haven't really had two teams, I don't know, tongue to tongue or head to head, toe to toe, whatever you want to call it, and have a last minute, last over, you know, Chris Bath, Brathwaite smashing four sixes or, you know, last over of the Cricket World Cup in 2019. There's, there hasn't been a game like that yet, has there? No, there hasn't. Each game has been kind of decidedly one way, hasn't it? It's... Interesting that you mentioned about the the pitches now becoming maybe bat first. That's something that we talked about before the tournament in the kind of preview, wasn't it? About the you know the Sky guys having watched their World Cup preview were talking about that maybe being the case. I liked what you said about the skill of the bowler. So Markram and Janssen both both clean bowled by Paul van Meekeren. Both uh, cross seam deliveries hit the shiny side, probably just skid on a fraction. Uh, and when that does happen, you, you, I mean, you, everybody listening to this, I assume, will know that if you bowl cross seam deliveries, if it hits the seam, it'll generally hold a fraction. But if it's the shiny side, it will generally just slide on that bit quicker. And I think that is a skill that he executed well. It doesn't always happen. It's a bit of a lottery when you bowl cross seam. But if you was, you've just got to try and execute your skill and hit a good length as a bowler, and then whatever happens from there happens. I thought. I mean, that it was it Logan Van Bake who got who bowled David Miller, and David yes. Miller, who is probably the king of finishers, the yeah, yeah, but he's probably the king of finishers in global cricket at the minute. You know, well known for it, power for days, natural timing, and I just thought again, bit of skill. He pitched it basically in the same spot as the previous two deliveries. It was maybe four inches straighter. And Miller's eyes obviously lit up. Last ball the over, probably could have just looked to get one and get off strike, but decided that he was going to try and hoon it and lost his off stump. So I was a bit surprised by that because I didn't think that, well, he's at the crease, South Africa are never really out of it. I know he was running out of partners, but, you know, by that point, what's the karate kid called? Who? Uh, Gerald Kutsia. Gerald Kutsia. You know, he'd been he'd shown already to that point that he can bat and found the boundary. So... Okay. Um, just a bit surprised by that decision from David Miller, but I think, you know, could see a Maharaj had a bit of a decent go at it. I think he, he got, what, 20 or 30, did he, at the end? Um, 40, yeah. Oh, 40. Yeah, so he can bat. Just a bit of a strange decision from David Miller, I think. Um, obviously, after yeah. that, could see a, you know, 
probably just tried to yeah, throw his hands at everything. And I, th- I think we needed. I mean, it it looked like. Do you know what it actually looked like? It looked like the South Africans were just trying to get closer to the net run rate towards the end. They mm. knew that they wouldn't get there. So there was a couple, I think, in the 40th and the 41st overs that there was a couple that they were just blocking out, making sure that they weren't bowled out so that they could nerdle a couple of runs towards the end. Oh, and just on the yeah. on the, on the the Netherlands bowling performance, how good were they? I mean, you know, I, I read a couple of tweets and, and messages saying, or Xs, whatever they call now, um, saying that, you know, is this a substandard pitch with the, the indifferent bounce? And from my perspective, I didn't see it that way. I saw it as the skill of the bowler doing something slightly different to either make it turn a little bit or keep, you know, mm. invariable bounce, which which I think for me goes down to the skill of the bowler, not necessarily the, the conditions of the wicket. So I think it's going to be interesting to see going forward how, you know, captains are going to choose whether to bat or bowl and see and see what goes on. It not doesn't necessarily come onto the bat any better. Maybe there's a bit of indifferent mm-hmm. rounds because of dew on the pitch. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I think something I heard today was I think it's a lack of dew. You know, there's not perhaps as much dew that's co- is coming down as expected. You know, it's maybe something that caught England out, maybe something that's caught South Africa out today. So, you know, and let's, and let's be fair, you know, you look at the Afghanistani bowling attack, they've got three world-class spinners. Uh, Dutt bowled incredibly well today as a spinner, even... Colin Ackerman mm. uh, and Roll Up Under Merver. I mean, what a, you know, he's a, he's a brilliant, brilliant cricketer. Thorn in South Africa's side at the moment. He just, yeah, uh, well, yeah. he is. Yeah, you know, it was the T20 World Cup result last year and obviously now today. But, you know, he, he's been around the block. He's played a lot of cricket for South Africa and then obviously gone to play for Holland when he was no longer acquired after a period of uh, adjustment or whatever the right terminology is. So, yeah. and, you know, and he's still Big getting game tomorrow it tomorrow now. To go. Who's the, uh, who is tomorrow? So New Zealand, Afghanistan tomorrow. So, you know, okay. New Zealand could go could go top. Although, you know, there could be another little upset along the way. I do call it an upset because no disrespect to Afghanistan. New Zealand should win that one. But then again, England should have beaten Afghanistan and South Africa should have beaten the Dutch. So exactly. You know, this Cricket World Cup's thrown a couple of surprises up already. Um, but yeah, one of two exciting. teams that are unbeaten. Keeps it exciting though, doesn't it? And I think that that's something we all want. There's no point. You know, the big four or big five just absolutely hammering everybody and then it just being a straight slog out between those guys. You know, I I don't mind it. I don't, you know, Simon's just discussed this. I've been discussing it with, you know, the three friends I've been away with. They're all, you know, fan- phenomenal cricketers, two of which will be coming on the podcast. And the the, the common theme seems to be that in, this England side isn't set up to, to win this World Cup. You know, not in the way, there's not the confidence behind this squad of players that there was the squad of players behind uh, behind the, the squad of players in 2019. Now, you know, Wokes and Topley or Willie, who we expect to come in for Chris Wokes for the next game on Saturday, it's not, it, 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 none of them scream Joffre Archer, do they? No. You know, no. there's a, um, there, was, there was a fear factor with Joffre. Yeah, we know he's injured. Yes, we know he's not able to play. Certainly not until the back end of the tournament, depending on his fitness. Yeah, it just doesn't have the same kind of feeling to it. This, you know, in this this World Cup as it did the last one. So I, I think we've got to manage our own expectations a little bit. Enjoy some good cricket. I've really enjoyed the tournament as a whole so far. I think it's been uh, good. Obviously, I, I you know I don't mind there being a couple of strange results if you like, just because I think it adds to it. So. Long may it continue, yeah. and, and whoever whoever comes out on top in you know November next year or whenever the damn thing finishes, then we'll 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 we'll, we'll see what we'll see what comes out in the wash. I'm not complaining about the length of it after these losses that we've seen, because as as we said right from the beginning, it gives the the cream the opportunity to rise to the top. Yeah. So I think there's going to be more consistent performances. These little hiccups along the way have had previously. You know, people have been knocked out because of a loss like now, where I don't think yeah. that will happen. So no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. As I say, expect more surprises. I, I would think. You know, I we would expect you might super brew pick for Afghanistan tomorrow after what I've seen in the tournament yeah. so far. I really, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think that I would still expect New Zealand to to win that game tomorrow. But you know, we I may be sat here with Simon tomorrow night, eating those words. So um, yeah, it will be Simon and I tomorrow night. I would assume. And, uh, yeah for now thanks very much Eugene thanks to you as always and we'll, uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow cheers mate.